It's uh, April uh, 21, uh, Tuesday, uh, day 27 of our daily devotion and prayer. It is the second day of the sixth week of uh, quarantine. If you have your Bibles with you, can I ask you to open it to Deuteronomy chapter 13. Deuteronomy chapter 13, and uh, you may also want to uh, mark uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 9. We will also be looking at that uh, uh, verse uh, later on. And I uh, entitled this uh, devotion, uh, Proclaiming the Excellencies of God. I believe that even in the midst of this pandemic, we need to keep our eyes on, on the Lord Jesus Christ, on our eternal destiny, but also be mindful of God's purpose for us to proclaim God's excellencies even during this crisis. And I believe that if we will focus on that, it will help us overcome our fear, worry, and anxiety, and even depression. For the past uh, couple of days, I have been uh, receiving uh, messages uh, about uh, people asking for prayers because uh, this uh, lockdown, this uh, pandemic is causing them stress. So I hope and pray that, uh, that today uh, God's Word will encourage us and give us comfort and strength to uh, carry on with life, to overcome depression and discouragement and, you know, as we fulfill God's purposes in our life. My devotion uh, today is taken from Deuteronomy chapters 13 to 15. I will focus on uh, two verses in these uh, uh, three chapters. The first one is Deuteronomy 13 verses uh, 3 to 4 and also Deuteronomy 14 uh, verse 2 and then we will go to the New Testament in 1 Peter chapter 5 uh, verse 9. But uh, let me uh, put this in its context so that uh, somehow we will have a, a good grasp on uh, what God's message is for us today. Again, I, I put in our Facebook page a, an outline. This is relatively long uh, to give you a reference as you study this uh, passage uh, uh, more uh, in-depth in your time with yourself or uh, with your family. Deuteronomy uh, chapters 13 to 15 is part of the bigger section from chapter 12 to chapter 25 wherein uh, Moses expounded on the Mosaic law. In chapter 13, uh, Moses expounded on the first and second uh, commandments. The first commandment is, uh, you shall have no other gods uh, before me. And the second commandment is, you shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything, and you shall not bow down to them or serve them. Moses, in, uh, in chapter 13, warned the Israelites three times. First, against prophets, family members or friends, and invaders who will tempt them to serve other gods. For example, look at verse 2 of Deuteronomy 13. In Deuteronomy 13, verse 2, uh, or let's start in verse 1, If a prophet or a dreamer of dreams arises among you and gives you a sign or a wonder, and the sign or wonder that he tells you comes to pass, and if he says, Let us go after other gods which you have not known, and let us serve them. Three times this phrase, let us go after other gods which you have not known and let us serve them was repeated three times in chapter 13. And three times Moses commanded the people not to listen, not to give in, or be deceived by this. In verse, uh, verse 3, it says, You shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. In verse 4, he said, You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear Him and keep His commandments and obey His voice, and you shall serve Him and hold fast to Him. Now, if we go to chapter 14, Moses expounded on uh, the third commandment, which is, You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless 
who takes his name in vain. In verse uh, 2 of chapter 14, it says, For you are a people holy to the Lord your God, and the Lord has chosen you to be a people for his treasured possession out of all the earths who are on the face of the earth. The people or the Israelites were set apart and chosen by God who alone is worthy to be worshipped. The Israelites were identified as a people set apart to the Lord, chosen by the Lord among all the nations of the earth to be his treasured possession. Thus, they should not take the name of the Lord God in vain by their way of conduct. And also, they should not adopt pagan practices, particularly eating clean and unclean food. In Deuteronomy 14, we will see there a number of passages wherein Moses said, You shall not eat any abomination, you shall not eat the flesh, the carcasses you shall not touch, and the flesh you shall not eat. And then he also said, Whatever does not have fins and scales, you shall not eat. In verse 11, you may eat all clean birds, but these are the ones that you shall not eat. And then he enumerated these things. And then in verse 21, you shall not eat anything that has died naturally. So he gave these uh, prohibitions. But, you know, if we go to the New Testament, we know that uh, all foods are declared uh, clean. Uh, referring to, to food, Jesus said, since it enters not his heart but his stomach and is expelled, Thus, he declared all foods clean according to Mark 7, 19. And also, in Acts 10, verse 15, a voice that came from heaven uh, to Peter a second time and declared what God has made clean, do not call common. So, but, you know, however, even if uh, the New Testament declared all foods clean, it does not give us a license to eat without being mindful and eat without control to the detriment of our health, especially during this lockdown period. Most of us just what? Well, sleep, eat, watch Netflix, sleep, eat, watch Netflix. So we just need to take care of our well-being. Now, but going back to, uh, to our chapter, uh, chapter 14, uh, chapter 14, verse 21 to 15, is an exposition of the fourth commandment by Moses. Observe the Sabbath to keep it holy as the Lord your God commanded you. The Israelites were commanded to remain faithful in giving their tithes. Even if the way is too long for them, they need to find a way to give their tithes as an act of worship. That's in Acts 14.24. The people were also commanded to take care of the Levites who had no portion of inheritance. That's in verse 27. And then in verse 29, the aliens, the orphans, and the widows, they must take care of it. And then in chapter 15, verse 7, they were also reminded that they need to take care of individuals who are in need. As I was reflecting on these three chapters, there are a number of things that, uh, that you know, I gleaned from this. But because of the brief time that we have, I want to focus on two prerequisites to proclaim God's excellencies in the midst of crisis. Two prerequisites to proclaim God's excellencies in the midst of crisis. The first one, nurture your love for God. Can you go back to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 13, uh, verse 3? In Deuteronomy 13, uh, verse 3, uh, Moses said, You shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreamers. Uh, the prophet who proclaimed something and it came to pass, but eventually when it came to pass, he asked the people to serve other gods. So Moses said, you shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God is what? For the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. The people should not listen to anyone who would ask them to do something in contradiction to God's word. God commanded the people clearly to have no other gods before him. God put them to the test whether they will be drawn away by signs and wonders to serve other gods. If the people love God, they should obey him. In verse 14, Moses said, 
You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear Him and keep His commandments and obey His voice and you shall serve Him and hold fast to Him. So, during this pandemic, we need to guard ourselves from what some men have written in the past that seem to have been fulfilled in the present or in the recent past. Most probably, a number of you have heard about a novel, a book, written many years ago that referred or alluded to this novel coronavirus originating from Wuhan. There are other things that you could have heard, you know, prophecies about the end times, when the end will come. These things could be a test from God, whether you would trust that fictional book, that novel written uh, years ago more than God's word. It is also a test for us whether we would put on a pedestal that writer or person who prophesied some things and it came to pass rather than putting and keeping on the pedestal the author of life, which is God. The Lord Jesus Christ said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. So during this crisis, I cannot overemphasize the importance for us to fight for our time with God and His Word. We need to continue to immerse ourselves in God's Word daily rather than getting glued on the news about coronavirus. We need to get ourselves anchored in God's Word. And whatever God reveals to us in His Word, we have to obey it. Because if we listen to God's Word, we obey it. We are nurturing our love for Him. And listen to this. When you nurture your love for Christ, you will receive wisdom and discernment. And you will have a clearer perspective about crisis and how you should respond to this. I remember what uh, the Apostle Paul wrote in, first, uh, in Philippians 1, 9-11, where he said, And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness, that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Paul's prayer is for the Philippians' love for Jesus to abound. If their love for Jesus will abound, they will receive wisdom and understanding and discernment to know what to do until the coming of Jesus Christ. So if you are getting depressed, if you are getting discouraged, if you are getting disoriented with what is happening right now, you need to remember this. Fight for your time with God's Word. Obey God's Word. Love God by obeying God's Word and then you will receive wisdom. If you want to know what to do again during this crisis, if you want to discern what God wants done in this time of lockdown or even after the full or temporary or a partial lifting of the lockdown. If you know what to do, if you want to discern what God wants done, you need to spend time in God's Word. You need to obey God's Word. You need to love God by obeying God's Word, and then God will grant you wisdom. Wisdom is what we need to face this crisis, to overcome worry, fear, and anxiety, and depression. Wisdom is knowing what to do, whom to do it, how to do it, and when to do it. So we need to nurture our love for God in this time of crisis by immersing ourselves in God's Word and whatever God reveals to us, we need to obey it. And our love for Him will abound. If our love for Him abounds, we will receive wisdom. Now, second prerequisite for us to proclaim the excellencies of God is this. Pursue the purpose of God. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 2. In Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 2, For you are a people holy to the Lord your God, and the Lord has chosen you to be a people for His treasured possession out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. Moses reminded the Israelites that they are a people holy to the Lord. It means they are a people set apart for God. And they were chosen by God out of all the peoples in the world to be His treasured possession. 
Can you imagine that? The Israelites were chosen by God among all the other peoples in the world to be His treasured possession. And as a people set apart for God, as mentioned earlier, they are to worship and honor God. They have to remain clean before God. They need to give their tithes to God faithfully. They have to help those who are in need, the Levites, the aliens, the orphans, the widows, and the poor. As Christians, we are also called to worship and honor God because we too have been set apart and chosen by God to be His treasured possession just like the Israelites. The Apostle Peter wrote in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 9, in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 9, it says, Sorry, chapter 2, verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. It says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him, who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. First, we are part of the chosen race as believers, not in a physical sense, but in a spiritual sense, being spiritual descendants of Abraham through our faith in Christ. So we are part of the chosen race. Second, we are a royal priesthood in a sense that every believer is a priest or intercessor before God. And I am glad that during this pandemic, God is raising a lot of prayer warriors in our church. And our homes are becoming houses of worship and houses of prayer. This is what we have been doing for the past uh, uh, five weeks. And also I want to remind you at 6 p.m. Uh, later and Monday to Friday, our family builders uh, initiated a five-minute prayer time for the family. So please uh, take note of that as well. Now, we are a chosen race. We are a royal priesthood. Third, we are a holy nation. It means that we have been set apart so that we can be a light to the world, drawing people to Christ and God's kingdom. So keep that in mind. In this uh, darkness that we are in, you and I, as believers of the Lord, are called to be a light to this world. We are a holy nation set apart so that we can be a light to our community and to our nation. And then, Peter described us believers, a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a people for his own possession. It means that we belong to God. You and I belong to God. And we are his treasured possession. I want you to keep that in mind especially during those moments that you will be down and discouraged and you do not know what to do, think about this. You are God's treasured possession and He will take care of you. And then, at the end of verse 9, Peter declared God's purpose of choosing us. That is to declare the praises of God. He said, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that, and that is the purpose, that you may proclaim the excellencies of God. God saved us in the past, secured our future, and sustains us in the present so we can bring glory to Him to be a light to this dark world. Especially during this uh, darkest season of our life, we need to let the light of Jesus shine through us. So, in spite of this pandemic, do not lose sight of God's purpose in your life. Life is not all about you. It's not all about me. It is all about God and His glory. And we are commanded by God. He saved us, brought us out of darkness into His marvelous light to proclaim the excellencies of Him. Last Sunday during our Board of Elders meeting, I shared with our elders a journal entry that I wrote. During my 30th spiritual birthday last March 11, the day before the president had a press conference announcing that there will be a community quarantine. That is a day before the announcement of quarantine. And my devotion during that day was Hebrews chapter 12 and 13. And I 
I shared with our elders four appropriate responses to this COVID-19 crisis that I want to share with you, uh, hoping that uh, we can be faithful to proclaim God's excellencies in this time of crisis. I believe as Christians, this is what God wants us to do during this pandemic. First, keep on running the race that God has set before us. Keep on running the race that God has set before us. Instead of getting derailed from our mission and purpose in life, we need to show and share the love and the gospel of Christ at every opportunity. I praise God for the number of opportunities that God is opening before us, not only in, uh, in, in our church hosting uh, the firefighters from Las Piñas, but also in other communities, God is opening doors for that. And I praise God for that. I also praise God for you. A number of you have been uh, sending your, uh, your financial uh, support uh, for this outreach. And this is one way of keeping, keeping us running the race that God has set before us. Second, we need to keep on talking to people about the kingdom of God that cannot be shaken. During these times, people are looking for stability. They need to hear all the things that have been made will be removed when the earth is shaken. Only the kingdom of God will remain. And I also praise God for many of you who are sharing our daily devotion to your friends, relatives. And uh, it's just amazing on how God is, uh, is using uh, this pandemic to draw more people into His kingdom. But even in your own uh, spheres of influence, in your uh, circle of friends or family, you know, take time to talk about God's Word, to talk about God's plan, to talk about the gospel of Jesus. Because this is part of our responsibility. And I believe this is what God wants us to do as well. Keep talking to people about the kingdom of God that cannot be shaken. And then third, keep on doing what God wants done. Uh, based on that reflection, I, I wrote a number of things. We need to lay aside every sin that entangles our walk with Jesus. We need to let brotherly love continue. We need to show kindness to others. We need to nurture and protect our marriage. We need to be content in life. And do not neglect to do good and to share what you have. It's all in Hebrews chapter 12 and 13. So keep on doing what God wants done. And then lastly, keep on praying for God's grace and mercies to be upon our families, our church families, our communities, our nation, and the world. We need to pray for wisdom, knowledge, and skill, and grace upon our national and local governments, especially those in the executive departments directly involved in managing the COVID-19 crisis in our nation. It is our responsibility to obey our leaders and to pray for them. So these are the four practical things on how we can proclaim the excellencies of God. Again, I have written the outline of this devotion in our church FB page for your reference. You can refer to that later on. So, don't forget, you are God's treasured possession. You are designed by God to proclaim His excellencies. He has a purpose for you even during this pandemic. So don't focus so much on the crisis, on the virus, on your problems at home or your situations in life. But you need to focus on God's purpose for you. And that is to proclaim the excellencies of God. And if you do that, I tell you, your love for the Lord will be nurtured and that you will have courage, strength, and hope. And you will overcome the depression and discouragement and the disappointment you're experiencing right now. God has brought us out of darkness into His marvelous light, and therefore, we must let the light of Jesus shine in our lives.